not required that you make some really, really stupid eyeshadow faces, but it is recommended. What is up, my dudes? Welcome back. Today's video was going to just be a review on Refi Beauty, but when I got done doing my makeup the past couple of times using these products, I was like, I look like an influencer. Like, I watched Jess Hunt's video, that she is the creator of Refi Beauty, and being completely unfamiliar with her up until then, I found her utterly lovely, and I kind of tried using the products the way that she uses the products, which isn't super different from the way I use them, but still, I employed a few new techniques, and I got done and I was like, I look really, really cute. So I'm calling this video, how to do your makeup like an influencer because when you get done you're gonna look like effortless and dewy and kind of like a little over the top but just it's that like dialed in oh this old thing makeup and her brow routine specifically but like all her products kind of lend themselves really nicely to it and i am going to give you final thoughts as we go well at the end and then my thoughts as we go through on the specialness or unspecialness of the products like individually. So I did pick up all three of her brow products. This is kind of the, what would you say? Marquee of her brand is her brow routine, but she also has a cream bronzer. I picked up two of her <laughs> cream blushes, which I apparently just knocked on the floor. I will show you guys that. And then this is her liquid highlighter. I'm gonna be using some other stuff too, but I'm gonna move you guys in. I'm going to apply all this makeup. We're going to discuss all my thoughts on Refi and it's gonna be really cute. So let's get started. So I just washed my face because I already had a really cute makeup look on with these products. And so I did just refresh all of my skin prep I have on the zinc screen from Super Goop. And so that's why if you're seeing any blurring in the 4K of it all, my skin is a little better than real life right now because there is kind of a pink color cancellation effect to that particular sunscreen in her tutorial, which was the main video that I watched by her and I also followed her on Instagram. She doesn't use a foundation and I was like, girl, we have that in common, but she did go in with a pretty high coverage concealer. I saw her pull out Tarte Shape Tape and I was like, oh hell no. Tarte Shape Tape is honestly like chuggy at this point. It's so influencer-y. So Sorry, a fully evolved lantern fly is just like crawling across the window behind the camera and it just terrified me. So anyway, so in lieu of that, I'm going to go in with the Beauty Blender Concealer just because it's probably the highest coverage that I have. Now, no concealer is going to look very good on my skin right now because I am doing sort of a slow peel. I'm, I'm using this retinol and all kinds of things and it's helping with my pigmentation, but it's also like, I don't know, giving me peely skin. So she uses concealer kind of like this. And the whole point being like, hey, we're gonna draw the eye and light energy to this triangular diamond shaped portion of your face. I bought her products in shades that I didn't necessarily, I mean, not all of them, her bronzer. I picked the bronzer shade in a shade that is not the lightest one. I picked it based on my undertone and I like it. And then also I got two of the blushes, one of them in a rosy tone and one of them in the shade Citrine, which is quite orange. And I sort of regret that <laughs> because the combination of that with the bronzer makes Citrine kind of unusable because it gets just kind of too much orange on me. But I will show you guys, I'll swatch them. So you see, like my under eyes look crazy. <laughs> And that could be alleviated if I were to use like a lot of oil, but I didn't want to put on a bunch of oil and then try and put a mineral sunscreen on top of it. It just would look really wild, so. That is the Beauty Blender Concealer, not in her best light, in the shade 1.60 W Light Peach. I do normally really like this formula. Okay, I know I look kind of weird, but I did want to go a little bit contrasty because we're going for the influencer vibe here today and I promise that at least in real life it will all come together. The 4K might sell me out, but at least in real life. So this is the first Refi product we're going to be using and this is in the shade Tan. It is her 
cream bronzer. And like I said, I think this is the middle shade. So I'm gonna go in with BK brush here and I'm just tippity tapping that and using it as a little bit of contour, but mostly as an actual bronzer, but generally doing it in this like face lifting kind of shape. Building more of it towards the back of my cheeks, really, really concentrating it in sort of this diagonal area and building it while constantly like checking the proportions of it. She also uses quite a bit of it on her forehead. And when I first did it, I was like, that's a lot. And then I got done and I was like, I don't know, it looks, looks pretty good to me. Bronzer looks more natural uh, built up on the forehead than blush does. And I never mean to put that much blush on my forehead, but somehow it just happens. So this is going to be more bronzer heavy than blush heavy. But you can see that that shade is very different, you know, in terms of depth than something I would typically use, but it looked a lot less orange in the swatches online than the fairest shade. And I hadn't actually watched any reviews on this yet. So I didn't know if anybody was even going to care. And then I was just kind of going through my subscriptions and I did see both Alana and Hannah Louise Poston had reviewed these. So figured there was an appetite for it. Okay. So that is a whole lot of bronzer. I'm going to blend that down my neck a little bit. And I'm actually gonna clean that up right here a little too. I wanna keep it away from my nose. Keep that brightness central. Okay, next. We're gonna go in with some blush. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch both of these. I probably will only use one of them. I will say, um, I can't remember what the price on these blushes was, but like they're the size of an eyeshadow. They're really tiny. So I got the shades Malaya and Citrine. This is Malaya, this is Citrine. That is a fabulous swatch khaki. And then that's the leftover swatch of the bronzer. So you can see how Citrine <clears throat> might be for a different occasion on me. It, I'm already kind of orange from the bronzer, so we're gonna go back in the direction of pink. But I do really like these formulas. You know, she, in her lovely British accent, her very calming voice, she um, loves talking about how she's like, made all this stuff in these really pleasant creams because she likes the skin to look really glowy and natural. And I think that these do achieve that. Not that it's a brand new idea. We use mostly cream products on my channel anyway, but I can see how she kind of came out of the gate wanting to make products that really um, satisfied an itch for her in terms of like being in search of the best brow products for like her brow aesthetic and then just fleshing it out and being like, all right, I'm just gonna make a bunch of products that I would wanna use kind of thing. And I'm going to continue probably putting on a little bit more blush and stuff, but I actually want to go ahead and still get that a little bit brighter towards the center of my face. Dude, a little goes a long way with this particular concealer formula. So. I get to talking and I kind of fall back into my own muscle memory and then I have to kind of backtrack a little bit. It's kind of like when you're drawing a person's face in art school, like you do. If you are uncomfortable rendering a certain part of their face, you will give them your face as that part of their face. You will draw your own nose or you will draw your own eyebrows or your own lips because in whatever part of your brain that is stored as the most familiar version of it. And so, you can tell when someone is like, you know, uncomfortable drawing noses or something like that. They'll just draw their own nose. Okay, that's a little bit better. And I'm gonna go ahead and just hit that with some Tower 28 spray because I want to be a dewy queen. Helps smooth down all my little growing back in post-pregnancy flyaways too. My son will be 10 months old day after tomorrow. Time really flies when you are on an exhausting treadmill all day. <laughs> what? Okay, let's do this highlighter here. 
So I think there's only one shade in this highlighter. I will have to take a look, but it is very much in the Jessica Hunt bronzy bronzy aesthetic. She is um, really lovely and it makes me want to like her products because watching her apply them, they look so luxurious and, and beautiful. I will admit that like there was a certain degree of bias like that happened after watching her tutorial. I was just like, oh, I see. Oh, these are special because like she's got a real face on her, okay? Like she's just gifted with like beautiful skin and flax and hair and like this really relaxing accent and everything. So, um, you know, I'm, try I'm trying to be unbiased here as someone who, you know, literally bought this before I even knew who she was just because I was interested in the products and the aesthetic of the products. But um, she is quite likable. <sighs> I can see the appeal. So very much like if you're gonna put out a universal highlighter, the fact that it's super gold doesn't really matter because it's got enough like neutrality to it that it reads as a bronzer and it's not too dark for me, which would be the only issue that I would possibly come across with it because of the color. Uh, I would say that the gold is, you know, that shade of gold is going to lend itself much more intuitively to dark skin tones. It would be more of a question as to whether I could wear it and I can, so. Super duper pretty so far, you know? I'm just really like surprised that these are colors that when I get them all on my face in the right proportions, it doesn't look super unnatural. Like it looks a little better than natural. Would the word be supernatural? I'm not sure, but it's like golden and bronze and somehow it's like coming off as believable on me, so. I think that that color that I got, tan, it was a good thing that I did that. Let's move into her brow products because this is her thing, right? She's got these really great, like I'll put it on the screen, these just beautiful like model brows, right? And I love how she's just like, I have a three-step brow routine, I'm not going to attempt a British accent. And um, you know, oh, my brows are sparse in this area and blah, blah, blah. Like anybody looking at her brows would be like, girl, there is nothing wrong with your brows, okay? Like, it's like when people message me and like companies message me and they want me to sell their teeth whitening system, whatever it is, and I'm like, you do realize like, I paid for porcelain to be installed in my mouth so that I never have to use anything like that. I'm not going to turn around and like be like, yeah, this whitening system is gonna make your teeth look like this. Like, you were either born with those brows or you weren't, but all that said, these are great brow products. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. And I'm gonna end up using more brow product than I ever, ever, ever would because I am going to kind of follow her system. I think each one of these stands on its own as a great brow product regardless. So this is the, oh no, they don't have the names of any of them, but I think that this is the brow bah, mousse. It does this number. It's clear, obviously only comes in like one shade. And this is what she does first, oddly enough. Like I would think that this was something to finish my brows with, but this is her first step. And when you have closed it, you can then pull the lid off. You can see I've used it. And that's when you can like, you know, shellac them up there, do the whole like brow lamination thing. And this stuff is pretty awesome. It's got some killer holds. So let's transform my brows here. Now the one thing that I have heard from like Hannah, and also it's been my experience a little bit too, is like, you can apply as much as you want that first coat, but don't go in for a second coat, because it does not want to be translucent if you try and do two coats. So I'm just gonna, I think you use the brush in for, I mean, I'm not sure that there's like a one way to do this, but like, this is a brow product that, is meant to hold all day. It's meant to like give you the model brow and then like that's going to stand the test of time over like, you know, heat and humidity and whatnot. In fact, ooh, can you make it hold my baby hairs down? Because we might be in business, friends. Cause like these are driving me so crazy. Oh my God. Ooh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we have hold. It wasn't right when I had my baby that all my hair fell out. It was like, I stopped breastfeeding at like five weeks and then it waited like another couple of weeks and then it all spent like a month falling out. And so it's all slowly deciding to grow back in. But you can start to feel this stiffening up and drying 
And then during the day, like as you're living your life, do I have something on my teeth? I just ate a peanut butter cup. As you're living your life, you kind of can feel a nice secure, not stiffness necessarily, but your brows feel like they're not going anywhere, which is a really good feeling, especially for people who've had trouble with that. So like I said, each one of these products really stands alone. I would be completely content for that to be my entire brow routine today. I have no problem with that being the way that my brows look the whole day. I mean, I'd like them to look a little more similar than that. But sure, you know, if we're gonna be doing like macro close-ups on my eyebrows because I'm an influencer, you know, maybe we would like fill them in or whatever. But also, are you seeing like this flaking that kind of makes me crazy. I'm wondering if that's just because of my retinol. I think that might just be because of my retinol. Like I think that my, my skin is flaking. So I, I won't hold that against the product. I've not seen that happen to anybody else. Her next step in her routine is actually this. This is the pomade, I wanna say. And so this is in the shade medium and it has a brush on one end and then you unscrew this end and it has the pomade inside there. And her whole mentality here was just that like most of these pomades dry out really fast. And this one is in a container where it's not going to, I guess. So that's the shade as you know, I swatch it on the back of my hand. And I've also been using this as an eyeliner. So that's also what I'll be doing today. And this little brush pulls out, you know, as much product as you want it to. I grabbed way too much. Um, but you know, this little brush right here is like just very similar to any other very fine line kind of brush that you might have in your collection. And it's meant to be able to go in sort of imprecisely and just fluff and fill in where you just want color, I guess, but you don't need to be drawing individual hairs. You kind of just want to add like presence. And it's a little warmer than my natural brows, especially because I have that pomade in there and it's kind of wanting to dry a little white on me because I guess my skin's peeling. And I'm just gently, I mean, I did not even re-dip it. I'll re-dip it now. Gently just going over the top of my brows. It's more about, I think, kind of coloring the front of the hairs than it is uh, pushing the product all the way down to your skin. Now, you know, could I achieve the same thing with boy brow? Yes, but I'm not sure that it would give me this much hold. Definitely has more hold than boy brow. But there are people like Hannah who literally just use a really nice bar of soap every time they do their brows. I've never been that person, but like, you know, I hear it works great. I'm gonna actually keep that on the back of my hand because I am gonna use it as eyeliner here in a minute. But the next step here and the final step is to use this delightfully tiny <laughs> pencil. It is so satisfyingly small. I really don't know why all these companies keep putting out these gigantic like dash shaped, dash shaped, dash shaped crayon type pencils, like, or even the teardrop shape sometimes drives me crazy because they're like, you have options. You can use the tip or you can use the bottom. Like now, once you use the tip, all you have is the bottom, you know, of that little teardrop shape. And so the precision just isn't really there. This thing is so tiny and she uses it to draw very realistic freckles when she gets done with her makeup, which I will also demonstrate. And it is great for that. So I'm going to, actually, I'll just show you guys what it looks like. It's a very, um, like a, a really good consistency in terms of stiffness versus creaminess. I also, you know, sometimes it drives me crazy when they're too creamy because then it's like, what's the point of drawing a line when it's already deposited so much product on my skin that, you know, it's gonna blend out to something kind of blurry anyway. And so she says that this is her like ideal way of drawing realistic looking hairs. I still have never been able to prove perfect that technique, but it does help fill in. When I have them all pushed up, I do end up with a couple of little sparse areas. And I also do like to pull my brows out just a little bit at the tail, just a tiny bit. It feels like I'm using a little bit more of the real estate that's on this like very vacant lateral portions of my face. So this does also, like if you're not planning on buying the entire regimen, uh, it does come with its own spoolie. So, you know, give you some options 
for it to be its own standalone. Like, have I ever in my life paid this much attention to my eyebrows? No, but do I notice a difference now that I did? Yeah. And it kind of makes me want to be a little bit more high maintenance about my eyebrows because like the payoff is there, right? Like that makes me look powerful. I love a power brow and like that is a power brow. So um, I'm going to just do a quick eye look because this is really about the brows and about the skin. So I earlier when I did this, I just pulled out my Thrive palette here and I'm going to start in the warm shades because I really want to like keep it tonal to what I already have on my face. Um, and if I start putting really cool tones, it's going to look dressed up really fast. I kind of just want it to look like I used the same bronzer on my eyes. I'm just going to start with this really warm shade right here. And I'm going to take that right in the crease, smash that right here and just build a little like outer V shape. There are exciting palettes and there are useful palettes. Some are both. I will not say this is the most exciting palette in the world, but it is my most used. Absolutely. I'm going to use a little bit of just like a, you know, warm white. Blend that onto the lid. I do recommend using Thrive eyeshadows with Thrive eyeshadows though. They are a little bit of a unique consistency because they're waterproof and they work best when they're used with their friends, you know? And then I'm just gonna take, yeah, something a little fluffier and actually go into my favorite crease shade over here, Bethany, because it's cool toned. And I'm gonna apply so little of that to both sides that it's just basically drawing an illusion in the crease. It makes my eyes look bigger, but you're not less necessarily detecting like gray. It's just a cool tone, so it's gonna recede from the eye. And then I'm gonna grab this little shimmery shade right here, clean my brush off a little, and just use that to blend the edges of everything all together. Like it looks almost unintentional, but at the same time, it's just kind of like barely there in a nice way. And it'll photograph really well. Use a little bit of the white up here to really finish everything out, clean those edges up. And as promised, I'm going to use this as an eyeliner. Bye. If it's still tacky on the back of my hand, I think that it is. It's very matte. So she said that it's like really good and movable, but it does dry matte, that brown mousse. So I'm using Zutania's brush to do this with because I'm going for like the most subtle eyeliner. This is the 208 from BK. And it's like the top, look how small this is compared to, there you go. Like look at it, it's so tiny. And sometimes I don't have the patience for it because it is so tiny. Uh, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna make the tiniest little line. Hope we've, dude, oh, flakes in my eyebrows. Look at how good of an eyeliner that is. It's just like so subtle. And I mean, if you are darker complexion and you're using a darker color on your eyebrows, it's going to read just as beautiful and subtle as an eyeliner on your skin tone as well. about how she uses individual lashes. <laughs> I do not have the talent nor the patience for that. So we're just going to do a light coating of mascara on my outer lashes to kind of give that fluttery effect. And I'm using a brown mascara because I want all of this to be very soft. But if you're not like super pale, don't worry about it like that. I do think I'm gonna add just a touch more blush before we go in and do frickles. And also if my audio just dies and I have to go into voiceover, please forgive me. My microphone is like blinking a red light at me. Everything's trying to croak. And I'm really taking this up again into that real estate that I 
trying to address over here on the sides of my face. I think that the one thing that really gets lost though is that highlighter. It's, I guess, more of a texture. A little more bronzer, even though I'm sure you don't think that I need it. And I am gonna finish it with a little bit of contour, powder contour. I'm gonna go in with the Victoria Beckham contour because it is a powder. I have this in the shade uh, 01. I like the idea of <laughs> like, some of your face having absolutely no product on it and then other parts of your face having like full coverage on it. I think that that is like what's in style right now, you know, as to doing your face, doing your face, doing your makeup like an influencer has a lot more to do now with, you know, low, low, low coverage where you don't need it. And, you know, then like editorializing in the most creative ways or the most like heavy handed ways in some cases to do exactly what you want to in other places. So you see how it's starting to come together and be really blended, but like you still see my skin through it. So another thing that she does is she does like, you know, a lip liner. She doesn't have a lip liner, I don't think. I'm just gonna use my khaki lip liner and then uh, a gloss. But because I want this to be like actually really nourishing, I'm just going in with the Kosas. This is the Lip Fuel from Costa Sport. I will say retinol definitely dries my lips out. So I, I like make sure not to touch my lips, but still it's like the whole ecosystem of my face is drier. And just blend the edges. Do a little, little snitch reaction here and just blend the concealer down a little bit on the corners of my lips. So it makes my lips look a little bit more like plump because they're less wide. And the last thing that we're going to do is her technique of using the brow pencil to make freckles. I need to find it, there we go. This really rounds out the look more than you would expect because I already have plenty of freckles, but they get obscured by makeup. And this little pencil, oops, does such a good job. You know, I, I own the original freck, but like as I was putting these on, Earlier, I was like, oh, ooh, I wanna just like keep going. <laughs> if it's me, you know, I'm gonna be putting a little bit more blush right on my nose. All right, my cheekies. And that's the vibe. Like, it's just a really good, natural looking it's a, like it's a lot of effort to look low effort but the products i feel like are what it all hinges on so i'm gonna move you guys back out we are going to talk about the prices on these refi products and then i will close with my final thoughts i even think that like i could go like lighter underneath my eyes you know just like even more contrast to really achieve the jess hunt of it all I mean, she makes it look easy because it's how she does her makeup every day, but I'm really trying to nail it down over here. Yeah, yeah, kind of something like that. I'm gonna leave it at that. So they sell in the US and the UK. She is British. There is the Refi Summer Skin Collection, which is what I started with. And that is the gloss highlighter, the cream bronzer, and a blush. And that is $65. The gloss highlighter on its own is 26. They do have a brush that is uh, a duo brush and it's $24. The cream bronzer on its own is $26. It comes in three shades, sand, tan, and onyx. Onyx is a bold claim for something that I will say is not actually like super duper deep, kind of reads as like a blush on some of these girls. Then you have the cream blush, which is $20 for this little guy. So I don't know how much exactly is in here, but that's like the same price as a Tower 28. I think Tower 28 is a bit more. So that's 0.16 ounces. And this is 0.05 ounces. That is a little precious. So I ended up getting two of the shades. There are three total. There is Rose, Malaya, and Citrine. I think I steered away from Rose just because it's like, bro, how many Rose blushes can you have? I have so many. And I really just wanted to go for like the bronzy bronzy of it all and like embrace the aesthetic of this line. So the brow collection, 
which is all three of the products that I use today is $55, which I think is pretty good. You know, they're an abundance of product and they are innovative. They do stand alone though. So, I mean, you can very easily just buy like the brow sculpt is $24, the pomade is $20, and the brow pencil is $20, which is, you know, right in line with what you're used to paying for these kinds of things, you know, at Sephora or whatever. Those are carried at Sephora, but that set does save you, gosh, I mean, it's $64 versus $55, saves you $9. So that's pretty cool. And she does talk a lot about how she's passionate about this packaging. I find it to be a little bit on the austere side. Like I would like to know what I'm holding in my hand. That's all. Um, it does have like the shade on some of them, but it doesn't even say like the name of the product or anything like that on it. So, um, you know, that's her call, but like that's, I mean, this doesn't have anything on it. Nothing. And this is the highlighter. So about the brand, I wanted to create a beauty. Oh boy, that's tiny. A beauty brand in, there we go. Mama figured out how to expand and the screen. I wanted to create a beauty line, I'm sorry, beauty brand in line with my values of quality and authenticity that would break boundaries and develop never seen before products. Refi encourages everyone to be confident enough to celebrate themselves and embrace their natural beauty. I mean, I appreciate that. That's kind of what they all say. Innovation, simplicity, and inclusivity are at the very heart of Refi. Whatever look you want to create, you can. And this is the brand, this is what the brand stands for. All elements and shades of this versatile of the versatile products have been meticulously designed to complement, wrong spelling of compliment, unless they do it differently in Europe. All skin types and skin tones, allowing everyone to achieve professional makeup looks with ease. My personal inspirations of beauty, fashion, and photography informed the Refi aesthetic, and I'm so proud of the brand, the products we've developed the growing community and our mission. I'm so excited for what is to come to continue to grow and to learn from you all. I can't wait to, to continue the Refi journey, journey with you all. And she does say that it's all recyclable as well. I do have a, um, sorry, I'm just seeing like, again, rounding errors here. I do have a TerraCycle box and so I can, you know, recycle all of my packaging, but she says basically as these things are emptied that they are 100% recyclable. I don't really know that that's true just because they are colored plastic and I'm not sure that anybody takes colored plastic, but I'm not an expert. So looking at my very different for me, just kidding, uh, influencer -y type, you know, makeup look that's going to like photograph in a very like sun kissed, oh, this old thing type way. I want to go ahead and jump into my final thoughts here on these products. The complexion situation. Obviously it's not like the foundation and concealer, but um, the bronzer, this is, you know, seems like a generous amount of product for the price. I do like the shades. If I can wear the medium shade, they're probably not that deep. Regardless, you know, fine formula, very pretty. I do feel like the entire face line leans warm. You know, the whole bronzer thing leans warm and you can tell by looking at her Instagram and her own aesthetic, like, the bronzers are not bronzers. They are warm, warm, warm bronzer. We're going in, you know what I mean? We're going with a heavy hand. She uses like a buffing brush the size of like this or something to just, you know, to like really like grind the bronzer onto her face. The girl is not afraid of it and it looks fantastic on her. But you know, that's not, that's just not everybody's thing and it might not be your thing. The blushes are to me a bit of a throwaway just because they are, crazy overpriced for the amount of product that you're getting. That is ridiculous to pay $20 for a very unspecial formula. <laughs> That's point, what was it? 0 0.05 ounces or something crazy? Was that what it was? Really? 0 0.05 ounces? You're getting 1.5 grams of product? You cannot, I'm sorry, you cannot tell me that this is, that your line, I don't care if it's, you know, Jess Hunt or anybody else, that your line is conscious of the environment if you're packaging that little tiny amount of product in packaging like that could hold more basically. If you really want people to buy fewer of them, put it in less precious packaging. I don't know why I can't get these words out. Maybe I need some water. Is it crazy, crazy price? No, but there's nothing particularly special about it that makes me want to pay that much for that little amount of product. That said, um, the brow products, are obviously the stars and for very, very good reason. I think that they are great. I think that they are priced well, I mean, for a luxury product. And she seems to be quite the expert 
on the particular aesthetic of brow that she's going for and it's very timely. When you're in the marketing space, you talk about like, you know, the recipe for success in launching a business. Most of it is timing. Your idea, depend, like whether or not your idea is good, depends on the timing. A good idea could be a good idea now or it could be a good idea in the future and a terrible idea now kind of thing. And the fact that her eyebrow game really matches what people are going for right now, she, you know, struck while the iron was hot. And so as far as they go, you know, do you need all three of them? I certainly don't. Will I make use of them? Absolutely. So. I'm not gonna say like, this is the one you need, this is the one you don't need. I'm going to try and give you like use cases here. So this is your average garden variety brow pencil. What makes this special is the teeny tiny tip on it. It is very, very precise. And I like that very much about it. And it does stand alone. It has its own spoolie on the end of it, things like that. And I do think that it draws very believable freckles. I will definitely reach for it again, if for no other reason than for that, because I do feel like it really adds something to a look. This right here, is probably my least favorite of the three, even though I do like all of them. It is the one that I will remember the least. And it is the one where, you know, you've got the brush on one end and the pomade in the other. And that is only because I was born with an abundance of eyebrows. I have brow privilege. And so I don't need to fill in with a lot of color on mine, you know? And if you do, then this might be really, really appealing to you. If not, you're probably in my same boat, you know, where you're like, yeah, I can get marker brows pretty quickly with a product like that. And I have to be quite careful. And I actually really enjoy a product that gives me something that's a little bit more natural and a little bit more like precise looking. And I feel like those two, the pencil and this are going to give me that like unexpected, like, Ooh, wow. Soap brow kind of look that that model brow. Whereas this is very much like, nah, kind of erases all that work. You know, it kind of blurs everything together. So not necessarily for me, but I do like that it works so well for what it's going for. It dries matte. It has a really, really nice consistency. It's very nice and moussey. And also um, I think it works beautifully as an eyeliner. <laughs> it's a fabulous eyeliner. And then this right here, this guy, this this whole situation, very innovative packaging. I think that that's really neat. And this is for people like me who already have a gosh darn abundance of eyebrow and you just want a blown out brow that holds. That's what this is going to give you. It's clear, so it's quote unquote universal. As I've seen it on other people, it has not flaked. I think that that is my retinol skin. Like, you know, I, I tried to scrub, scrub, you know, just like, when I washed my face, I tried to get all the dead skin off a little bit so that the makeup went on better, but I obviously am not like scrubbing in my eyebrows. And this is a pretty like stiff little brush right here. And this is obviously like straight up plastic. So I could see it kind of kicking up a little bit of like, you know, dander, <laughs> disgusting, uh, underneath my eyebrows. So that's probably what happened. And regardless, I would figure out a way to make this work because it's such an effective way of like getting that hold out of my eyebrows. Like I have worn it on its own and it really does exactly what she says it's gonna do where it just like, you know, pfft, like blows them out and holds them. It's really, really great in that respect. So big fan of the eyebrow products. This I have like already forgotten about my face forgot about it. The highlighter, like it's very pretty, but it's a shimmer goo, <laughs> you know? And I'm sure that somebody who is willing to put more of it on than I did is going to find it very nice. And honestly, it probably is gonna look really nice on deeper skin tones. It's gonna show up more instead of it just kind of blending in with the bronzer like it did on me. I'm a little afraid to put too much on because I'm afraid it's gonna really disrupt everything, but it's pretty, it underwhelms me the same way shimmer goos typically do. It's a whole lot of product. I will hand her that. That is a lot of product, but like who wants a whole lot of something that they're not going to use anyway. So the, the cream products are as good as any other cream products. The brow products are outstanding. This is like, I'm confused, you know, it's just not, it's just sort of like, there's no point to it. So anyway, those are my thoughts on Refi. And this is my, I don't know. I felt cute when I got done. Uh, I feel like a, a glowing, um, you know, travel influencer on the Isle of Mykonos. Is Mykonos an isle? Or is it just a city in Greece? I'm really sorry if you're from Mykonos. <laughs> Either way, I look like I know where Mykonos is. <laughs> Fold 
you all. But yeah, those are my thoughts. I hope you guys found this valuable, whether you had heard of Rafai yet or not. And I do want to say, like, you know, <laughs> More power to anybody who is coming out with their own brand. I think she did a pretty stinking good job for, you know, this being a, a brand new venture. And you can tell, you can always tell in these lines, like what somebody's favorite part of their routine is. You can very much tell that her brows are her favorite part of her routine. And I think that that is why Sephora is carrying her brow products because they're very good. So um, if you did find this valuable, do give it a thumbs up, guys. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.